Radical. Welcome to part three of Radical Rabbit Power Combat Response for February 21st through February 27, 2022. Short comments, quick replies. Rune Mamba. Joel Embiid and Harden are better than Katie and Kyrie on and off the court. Katie and Kyrie are both snakes and drama queens. I even take Giannis and Middleton over Katie and Kyrie. Well, when it comes to overall talent or ability to just uh, control the game, it's close between KD and Giannis, but I mean, right now, as far as like best player, Giannis, Embiid, KD, they all have different advantages. I mean, they're all dominant. I don't know. That's that's really, really tough. As far as importance to their team, Giannis is most important to the Bucks. but that's not what you're saying here. You're saying that Embiid and Harden are better than KD and Kyrie. Well, maybe Embiid, but not Harden. No, I think uh, we overestimated what Harden is currently capable of. Maybe he needs to quit partying. Maybe that's a problem, you know? It could be, it. I just don't know. They're not a better duo right now. Potentially, maybe when they mesh, there's an argument to be made. Maybe they just need to, you know, get used to one another and get their rhythm down, possibly. I don't know. Art Bell updates. Rob is back streaming, live streaming, Selling Rob versus Elden Ring Part 4. Face Destroyer, uh, 55, watching. Okay, uh, well, I'm never really going to be 56. Uh, I went down that road, 2020. I called that one out for e-bagging, you know, which is kind of odd because Silent Rob used to call out Alpha Mega Sin, you know, even though now he's e-bagging, taking donations from people. So I'm kind of confused on that. Uh, one thing I'm just kind of curious about, to be honest, is, is his Fiero that he e-bagged an engine up for, is that still holding up? <laughs> Fiero. Uh, this might offend some owners of the Fiero, but a Fiero is hilarious because it's what you buy when you can't afford a Ferrari. It's even close. Fiero, Ferrari. Maybe they wanted to make people think that you were driving a Ferrari. I don't understand it. Moon Knight 1985. You need to look at the beat me ups. Beat me ups? Beat me offs? Video, it's bad. Yeah, it was bad. But when like the kind of bad where I'm like, that's just terrible. What kind of e-bagging is he doing now? It was just like bad, like just, just bad. You know, like, like not even like a terrible, like the kind of bad that makes you mad. I mean, I don't really get mad these days about any of these uh, YouTubers and the YouTube stuff, you know. I used to sometimes, but nah, I don't really care much these days. Uh, yeah, it was bad. So 100% correct. That's all I have for that one. It was bad. 9G, you can e-bag for your fuel, ha ha ha. It seems cheaper to get a cab these days if you don't do tons of traveling. No insurance, no mode of transportation, no petrol cost, and no replacing bald tires or general repairs. There was actually a YouTuber. You may have heard of him, Radical Reggie. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, something happens, and if I don't mention Radical Reggie within a couple weeks... You know, I, I don't know. Like, I have to mention Radical Reggie. I've been told that I'm obsessed with Radical Reggie, which is kind of strange. It's kind of weird, right? Like, people come by and they say, you know, why are you so so obsessed with Radical Reggie? I'm like, how many months has it been since I said anything about fucking Radical Reggie? You know, isn't that a requirement of being obsessed? You actually would have to constantly talk about one person to be obsessed? But I don't know. What I'm obsessed with is delivering quality commentary for those of you out there that think I'm obsessed but yeah, years ago, he actually, believe it or not, he begged for gas money. Had like a bar of some sort. My memory's kind of fuzzy. But he had a live stream and he had a bar collecting gas money. I shit you not to get to a Portland Retro Game Expo that supposedly wasn't even really that close to. But man, man, is my memory fuzzy. It's a fuzzy muff of a memory on the stuff from years ago. Terry W. Cool mags, but wait, no raccoon world or those cheeky, naughty mags full of pictures that I hid under the bed. Funny thing about those cheeky, cheeky, naughty magazines. In flea markets, you generally, of course, can't have and sell those. Can't sell those. I do have one comic that is not cheeky. It's not naughty. It's not, not like a vampire or nothing like that. But I look at it and I'm like, Man, it's kind of questionable. It's like a Conan the Barbarian comic 
think it's Conan, something like that. And there's literally like like some questionable pictures in there. But you know what? It's in the comic box. All the comics are a dollar. And by God, I'm going to sell that box of all those comics for a dollar each. I'll just like stuff it like on the bottom, you know, to where it's not like seen by the flea market bosses, which I never see. You know, they exist, but you never really see them. Hmm. Eric's what? Eric Z97. Yesterday, and that, that sound? It's cough drop. Really sore throat right now. Eric Z97. Yesterday, he used the war in Ukraine as clickbait. And I think this is where I draw the line. That's not cool at all. What was it titled? Uh, it was Scotty Kilmer, of course. Number one, El Numero Uno clickbaiter. What, some of you think the biggest clickbaiter on YouTube is Smash JT? No, 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 no. It's Scotty freaking Kilmer. Scotty's always talking about how he's quitting, talking about how Ford and Toyota, it's over for him. They're shutting down. Well, maybe not Toyota, but it's over. You know, they just changed the game. It's like not really that big of a deal. But he actually had a video title. Let's see if I can see what it's titled here. It was titled, I Just Witnessed the War in Ukraine. And he's pointing at a plane. And I'm like, dude, that's just, that's messed up. Just messed, it's just messed up. I agree that that is messed up, right? That's a different kind of level of clickbait. But I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do. I mean, Scotty does have some videos where he gives like some good information to people and stuff. So there is that. Uh, and he's not constantly e-bagging people. There is that. But when it comes to clickbait, he is one of the freaking worst. Rick, the writer. This phone is not nearly as bad as some people try to make it seem. Definitely a decent budget phone to get calling and texting done. Of course, it won't perform well with heavy use and multitasking like high-end phones. Talking about the Orbic, which is by far the worst smartphone I had ever had. I didn't have it for a couple days, and I had to get rid of that crap. Now, why it was crap for me was basically mostly the fact that I would put it in my pocket, and no other phone has done this. I put it in my pocket, and some was up the screen, and then I'd be randomly calling people. I'd be going to websites. I'd be hearing things going on in my pockets. You know, there was a party going on in my pants. It was craziness. And it was just consistent. And I'll, there was other issues with it. But if it works for you, hey, if you buy a 30 buck phone, and I, I don't like paying a whole lot of money for things like phones, because to me, I'm not going to really like multitask and get a lot of use. And I'm not using my phones for lots of different reasons other than freaking calling and watching, you know, uh, videos and stuff of that nature. Uh, yeah, if it works for you and it's 30 bucks, get it. Have fun with it. You know, there's people out there that are like, you know, I'll just get a $30 phone and I'll just use it and I'll be happy with it. Yeah, okay. More power to you. APAC. Uh, APAC 2002, okay. Doing hate videos about other YouTubers is such a waste of time. Now, this is my reply to you that I wrote. I agree, unless you can take it to a professional level of critical satire slash educational commentary like myself, it is a waste of time. There are many unaware of what the real reason behind this particular individual's sympathy upload was. I did my part to educate. I had some great educational uploads on the 8-bit guy. And... You know, there's still, there are people that come by and say, why are you obsessed with 8-Bit Guy? And I'll point to the channel and I say, how many weeks or months has it been since I did an upload about 8-Bit Guy? So yeah, I just get really kind of sick and tired of hearing that same like jealousy argument. I'm like, mostly, most times I'm like, who, what, where, w when did I talk about who? I, I don't know. Penguin Wizard. I used to be subbed to Retro Bro on my original account, too bad he mostly talks about the Amico, which, which is boring to me. I think he does it because it was a way for him to get views, and that's all. I think that's a reason, like, a lot of these Amico cultist-type channels would have their uploads. Some of them really believed, I think, in how awesome it would be to get their Amico and have fun with it and whatnot. But let's just be honest here. There was a lot of people on YouTube that were just specifically doing the Amico uploads to get views. And I made a reference earlier to Smash JT. Case in point. I mean, he's he's got some of the worst clickbait uploads. I would say currently, uh, I mean, Scotty's still up there. But 
why is it I can always reference him when it comes to clickbait or um, lack of authenticity or whatnot? But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people doing Amico uploads, not because they have something interesting to say about Amico or they have fun with it, but they just want views talking about Amico. Restorize 97, the Ferrari is a status symbol vehicle. There are many others like it that are the same way. You buy that to show off not just to women, but to the whole world. You know, you can take the same person, the same exact person, Red Stratus. You can take the same exact person, uh, go in the same exact places every single day, meet the same exact people. And if they're driving a, a beat up Civic, if they're wearing the same exact clothes, you take that person and you put them in a bright red or yellow Ferrari. Same circumstances, same situation, same scenarios. I guarantee you that person's life will change for the better. They will be seen as an important person. And if that's the only thing that changes. We live in a society that values things like that over someone's personality, over someone's genuineness. You know, not going to lie. I've thought to myself, you know what? Like, I'm pretty good with the ladies and whatnot, but how much more trim, how much more high quality supermodel type trim would I bring down if I had a brand new freaking Ferrari? I would never get tired of it. If I had a brand new Ferrari, there would be women almost, well, very shallow females, almost fighting over each other to get to someone like myself that is in good shape. And, you know, it was just fun to be around. Like I would be one of, and it, nothing else would change. Nothing else would change other than the fact that I drove that Ferrari. So, you know, you buy into that. You buy into being a status symbol. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you're correct. You do it to show off to women, but to the whole world. Me, though, I would get it specifically just to show off to attractive women, uh, to bed lots of attractive women. That's what I would do it for. The Wind Avenger. Rick, you've certainly saved people thousands of dollars by exposing these well-off YouTubers who want to steal money from their audience, many of whom are probably less wealthy than the e-baggers. You're essentially doing Robin Hood's work, keeping poor people's money from going into the coffers of the rich. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Robin Hood, Robin, 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 Robin Hood, correct me if I'm wrong, Robin Hood, uh, Kevin Costner, or the animated version, didn't they steal money from the rich to give to the poor? The idea being that the rich... In those scenarios, we're taking far too much money from the poor. I don't think it's like exactly the same thing. I get it, understand it, that you're saying that I call out a lot of these rich YouTubers that are secretly actually rich, like let's say are very well off, and they make it seem like they are very poor, and they can't afford to buy their video games. Even though they have a lot of stuff they can actually sell to buy the other stuff, and then you have like the... Uh, the people that I would equate to maybe being cultist that are worshiping these people because they think ironically they're just like them. When the reality is, you know, when these YouTubers get off screen, you know, they might be hopping into their Ferrari, you know, with a lot of money that's actually been e-begged up from their audience that bless their hearts. They just need education onto what's going on with a lot of these YouTubers. And that's not to say that like I personally and against wealthy people, uh, you know, it's fine. People have a lot of money on YouTube. Winged Avenger, I have no problem with that. Especially channels that don't e-bag and actually have grown their channels to the millions. That is fantastic. That is wonderful. I just sometimes like to step in and educate people when there's a lot of, lot of scams and cons going on. Most specifically, when you have like someone like the Retro Future that rubs elbows. Just as an example, rubs elbows with freaking... Uh, you know, Mr. Beastie and has a lot of donated game stuff sent to him and can afford to live in a posh area. You know, when someone like that makes it seem like eh, your donation, like, oh, just fuck people like that. Fuck them. 